Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back into the studio. This week's video is an excerpt from one of my Patreon exclusive videos. This is from the second episode in the portrait series. If you want to get hold of a plaster skull to work from yourself, you can check the link at the top of the video description where you can purchase one from my friend Thor. If you want to support the channel and watch the full video, head over to patreon.com forward slash You'll find the link in the description below. I hope you enjoy the video. Last episode, we dealt mainly with information available to us from the profile views. We can never objectively observe depth, or it's so difficult we would prefer not to try. So from the profile view, we can establish the heights of our skull, and we can establish how far left and right the features of our skull are in relationship to each other. And by doing so, we have set up something to be more or less true. This means that by the time we get here, to the front view, we are only going to concern ourselves with certain things while leaving other considerations behind. Considerations that we've already made. Remember what I just said, don't attempt to observe depths. What was once left and right from our profile views are now depths from the front view. We are not going to concern ourselves with those because they have been established and we can't make a better decision regarding the depths of our features from the front view than we could when depth was left and right from our profile views. I know that sounds a little bit confusing perhaps, but it makes sense once you begin sculpting. The main takeaway should be don't mess with the depths, since they've already been established well from a different viewpoint. The other thing that I already mentioned that we set up last time was heights. Heights can be observed from the front view just as they can be observed from the profile views. Does that mean, however, that I'm going to actively pursue changing them now from the front view? The heights, that is? No. If I've done my job well in the previous episode, I should have established heights fairly decently. Now, because these can be observed from the front, I'm not shelving considering them to the same extent as I shelve considering depths, for example. But they are not my first priority and not what I'm really looking to improve here. I'm not actively asking myself a lot of questions about my height while I work from the front view. So what am I actively asking myself questions about then? It's not depth, never depth, it's not the heights, it's the width of course. The one thing I haven't been able to observe yet from the profile view is the width of my skull. That's because the widths from the front view are depths from the profile view and I cannot objectively observe depths. But now, what was once depth from the profile view has been turned into left and right and I can finally observe them. Let's take a quick second to talk about how you can support the channel. Subscribing and liking the video is of great help of course, but if you would like to get something in return for your support, head over to my Patreon page. On Patreon, you can watch exclusive content like the Beginner's Guide to Figure Sculpture, which we just completed, and the Portrait series, which we just started, where I will show you everything you need to know about sculpting portraiture. You can also get personal feedback on your own work from me, on anything you might need help with in your sculpting endeavors. So check it out, there's a link in the description below. On the totem pole of things to get right, widths are below heights. Widths are easy to grow, it's very difficult to change heights. It requires more work and the chance of things going wrong adjusting heights is much larger than when adjusting widths. This is not unique to portraiture. Widths are always more forgiving and heights are always more unforgiving. So try to establish the heights first and get them more or less in the right place before beginning to establish widths.
with a lot of width, everything becomes difficult to deal with as there is more clay to move should you need to move something. So with less width in the beginning, we have an easier time fumbling around with our heights and getting them in the right place. A major issue people run into when they've built the profile, establish depths of the features and are ready to move to the front and begin working on the widths is losing track of the good work that they've done up to this point. Just knowing that you should or need to respect the work previously done is a major step in the right direction. It's a bit trickier perhaps to implement that successfully than it is to say it. But this is one of those places where intention comes into the picture and becomes very important. Every piece of clay that you lay down should be a conscious decision, an answer to a question observed from a distance. In this way, no piece of clay ends up somewhere by accident. If you are placing clay somewhere, you should know what you are trying to achieve by laying that piece of clay down where you are laying it down. If you think this is true, you will never lay down a piece of clay that adjusts the depths of your skull while working from the front. Clay that pushes form towards you or increases its length is a mistake as it hasn't been observed well and is not an answer to a question. You have to objectively answer the question you ask yourself about your sculpture and when you cannot objectively observe something, then you can't objectively answer it and you shouldn't lay down clay to make adjustments. I like to try and switch my viewpoint every 25 minutes or so. It's a good habit to get into as it will force you to get a fresh new look at your work. It makes it impossible to push the piece in one direction for too long and this can be a good thing. What if the direction the piece was headed in was a, was a bad one for example? Changing viewpoints and working from a new perspective helps us dodge this issue or at least mitigate it. So as you can see right now, I'm back to my profile again. I'm looking to make sure I haven't made any major mistakes by changing any of my depths from the front. Perhaps the added width and the fresh perspective it provides me will give me some more insight into things that perhaps can be improved on the profile, and I'm sure there are some. You'll notice me, for example, here, bust out a rake tool to adjust the brow ridge and I also draw some information that was missing that I hadn't really added yet, namely the teeth or the, or the section that the teeth will eventually occupy. From one profile, I can obviously not adjust symmetry as I can only see one of two sides. So I try to make subtle adjustments and take a look from the front every now and then just to make sure that I'm not pushing the clay in a direction that's going to make life difficult for myself later. I know I spoke about the danger of working on depths because we cannot observe them objectively. That's exactly what I'm doing a lot of right here, however. I'm increasing the width of my skull from the profile view by adding clay in a fashion that brings the skull closer to me which is dangerous, but I can do this because I pay close attention to how much width I actually need to add before I'm getting close to the overall widths that I'm after. I can tell from the front that I need a lot of clay to get there, so I don't have to worry that much. I'm not adding mountains of clay anyways, just enough to begin to describe how light and shadow travels over the surface of my clay skull. A major visual aid that you have when sculpting is value, which seems a little counterintuitive perhaps. 
I don't rely fully on value, but I do use it to my advantage when the opportunity presents itself. Right now, it does present itself. My plaster skull is white, which means that it's very easy to see and read the values that fall over its surface. And this is much harder to do with skin, because skin has a natural variety in tone and value. And I still do it while sculpting real people, but it is much easier here with the skull, however. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, consider liking it and subscribing to the channel for more videos. I put out a new video every Thursday, so stay tuned for next week. If you want to support the channel, visit the link to my Patreon page in the description below the video to learn how. Until then, stay creative and I hope to see you in the next one.